Eleanor, I would like to believe in God, but the problem of evil not only gets in my way, but is thrown at me by a lot of uh, my scientific friends who, uh, who would reject God. Um, I've heard many arguments that justify or explain or rationalize evil if there were a, an all-good, uh, all-powerful, all-knowing God. Um, which of those kinds of arguments do you feel are the best? Well, I think the first thing to say, the crucial first thing to say, is that when we're talking about human suffering, we have to be very careful. It can't be just another thing in an academic disputation. Mm -hmm. The whole crust of the earth is soaked with the tears of the suffering. And that has to be revered. It has to be held sacred. You have to remember what a truly dreadful thing it is that there is that human suffering. And you have to do, you have to keep carefully in mind what you can do to alleviate it. All kinds of suffering. Your own responsibility to contribute to helping to diminish it where you can has got to be uppermost in your mind. So you can't, you can't forget what we are talking about here and just have another academic disputation. So that has to be, that has to be the context within which we talk about these things. Sure. Second thing to understand is that no matter what we come up with by way of theodicy or defense, nothing about that alters the fact of suffering. So what is at issue for theodicy or defense is not something that eliminates suffering or shows that it never existed. That's not it. It's what's at issue for theodicy and defense is what can redeem suffering. It's what can redeem it. And, and even if suffering is redeemed, what's redeemed is suffering. Suffering stays. So if there were a successful theodicy, it would in no way take away the suffering. So you can think about hospitals that way. What do hospitals do? They produce suffering and, and redeem it. So you take somebody to the hospital and you know whatever was the matter with them before is going to suffer more in the hospital. But we think the suffering is redeemed by the good that the hospital produces for them. Okay, but notice that nothing about that good takes the suffering away. Theodicy is like that too. If you can find something in your philosophy, in your theology, that redeems suffering, doesn't take suffering away. The suffering stays. So that you have to remember, too. And the suffering that stays is lamentable, heartbreaking, deplorable. So we have to remember both those things. Okay. Okay. What we have to ask is this, look, what's the end we're going for? Or if there's a God, what's the end God is going for? What's the point of anything? Why are we doing this? Why are you and I doing this? What's the point of anything? What's it for? And the answer to that question is going to give us a scale of value. We can't begin to talk about the problem of suffering without a scale of value. See? So what is it that is the good for us? And what theology tells us is the ultimate good for us is shared union of love with God. Union of love which is shared in joy and in peace with all the others who participate in that union. That's the good for us. That's the good for us. And so here's a question, what keeps us from this? What's the obstacle to our having this? Well, the obstacle doesn't lie in a perfectly good, perfectly loving God. That's not where the obstacle is. The obstacle is in us. Some wit, I forgot who it was, said, that the doctrine of original sin is the only theological doctrine overwhelmingly confirmed by empirical evidence. <laughs> yeah, that's a bitter joke, isn't it? It's a sad joke, because you look at all the evil human beings cause, and honestly, you know, don't you sometimes think, here would be a good idea, apologize to trees for being part of this species. You know, look at what we've done. Look what we do to each other. Look what we do to the earth. It, that's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. Okay, but that doesn't mitigate the fundamental problem. No, I'm setting it up. I'm heading that direction. See, the problem I'm of evil... I'm riding with you. Yeah, the problem of evil is a huge problem. We're not going to be able to give the 25-word answer here. Okay. So first, first we remember that we are human with all that that entails and the need to revere the suffering of humans. Then we have to have a scale of values by which we look at this suffering because 
if we're going to find something that redeems suffering, it's going to have to be something which outweighs the suffering on some scale of values. So we need a scale of values. And the scale of values needs to be the scale of values that is accepted by those who think there is an omniscient, omnipotent, perfectly good God. Otherwise, the logic of the argument from evil doesn't work. Okay. So, so here's one end of that scale of values. Everlasting union and love with God shared with others in that same union. Here's the other end of the spectrum. Unending absence of that shared union of love. Willed loneliness that is permanent. That's the other end of the spectrum. Now, if you look at what it takes to make union, here's a thing you can see. Insofar as you're divided against yourself, you can't unite with anybody either. If you're divided against yourself, there are parts of yourself you don't want to see, parts of yourself you don't want to acknowledge, parts of yourself you're trying to keep secret from yourself, parts of yourself you're at war with. If you're, if you're hiding from yourself at war with yourself, how am I going to join you? Whichever part of you I'm trying to get close to, the other part doesn't want me. It, it, I'm not going to be able to be close to you if you're not close to yourself, if you're divided against yourself. And if you look at the world's great literature, if you look uh, at uh, empirical psychological studies of post-traumatic growth, look at... at all the different evidence we've got about what suffering can do, what you see is that suffering is one of the ways in which people come to overcome the divisions within themselves. Aeschylus says, Aeschylus says what I really love, he says, he says, grace comes violently from the gods who rule the ship. Aeschylus says, Zeus, who has put suffering on the road to wisdom, decrees that in sleep, remembered pain drips black against the heart. Hmm. So, what the ancient Greeks thought is that without suffering, the best things available to human beings cannot be gotten. Now, they thought of those best things in terms of wisdom or deep understanding. The Christian tradition shares the basic idea about suffering, but adds to it this part, the good that comes to you is not a, part, a good that you have alone by yourself, like wisdom. It's something that you have in connection to other people, in shared second personal experience that brings joy and love. And that's what suffering is good for. That's what redeems it. That's why a loving God would allow it.